Today we are going to study the structure of anther. In the previous lecture we have studied that androsium it is male reproductive part and each member of androsium it is called as stamen. This is the diagram of a single stamen which shows anther and filament. These are the two important parts of stamen. Now these two, that is this and this, these are the two compartments of anther which are called as anther lobes. The two compartments are connected with the help of a connective. Now when there are two lobes in an anther, then the condition is called as dithesis. But if there is only one anther lobe, suppose if I erase this, now in this anther there is only one lobe, then this condition it is called as monothecus. Mono means one and theca means lobe. Di means two and theca means lobe. Now we will see the structure of PS of anther. So this is the diagram of PS of anther. This diagram shows mainly 1, 2, 3 and 4. Four circles can be seen in this diagram and different layer of cells are present. This diagram is little bit complicated as uh, you can see or refer page number 3 of textbook. The entire diagram it is filled with different layer of cells. Here for you to avoid confusion I have drawn only one part of it remaining all the part will be same like this. So how this is formed? Few hypodermal cells of anther they get transformed into archisporial cells. Uh, these archisporial cells they will further divide into inner sporogenous cell and outer parietal cell. Now the next thing or the next change that is going to take place is these parietal cells they will form these parietal cells they will form wall layers of anthers and the sporogenous cell it will form sporogenous tissue now if you carefully look at this diagram this particular part that is sporogenous tissue you can see over here this is the sporogenous tissue and it is present in all the pollen sacs but I have drawn it little bit differently to avoid the confusion so that you could know what is present or what are the changes that are going to take place in the pollen sac. Now first what we will see is wall layers of anthers. How many wall layers are present, where they are present and how many layers of cells are present in wall layers. So in all there are four wall layers of anther. The first one it is called as epidermis. This is the first layer of anther. Then comes the second one which is called as endothecium. The third one, it is called as middle layer and the fourth one, it is called as tapetum. So these are the four wall layers of anther. This is the transverse section of anther. The entire diagram, it represents transverse section of anther. Now, we will see in the diagram these different layers where they are present. Now carefully look at this diagram. See, 
the first and the outermost layer for that i have used a red marker as you can see the entire wall layer of anther which is drawn by red color this is epidermis so epidermis it forms the outermost layer of anther this is single layer see you can see there is only one layer of cell red color everywhere wherever you can see there is only one layer of cell and these are flat cells now the main function of epidermis is protection next to epidermis that is below epidermis you can see the second layer that is endothelium coming to the diagram this is the second layer this is called as endothelium for this i have used blue marker in the entire diagram you can see this blue line or blue layer of cells this is endothelium epi means outer endo means inner so the outer one is epidermis the inner one is endothelium the basic difference between epidermis and endothelium is the outermost layer of cell that is epidermal cells these are flat cells whereas the endothelial cells these are little bit elongated cells then comes the third layer of cells that is middle layer as you can say all these black color cells for this i have used black marker all these are middle layer cells the first one is epidermis the second one is endothelium and then comes middle layer so these are more compared to the first and second middle layer it is about 2 to 3 layer of cells but these cells they are thin walled as it helps in the process of dehiscence at maturity now we have to see the fourth one which is called as tapetum i have drawn it specifically different in another pollen sac so this is one pollen sac this is second this is third and this is fourth pollen sac now each pollen sac it shows presence of triangular cells these triangular cells these are called as tapetum this layer it helps in nutrition of developing pollen grain therefore it is also called as nutritive tissue this forms the innermost layer of anther outermost is epidermis innermost is tapetum so these are the four layers now coming to this part which is called as sporogenous tissue where it is present it is present inside the pollen sac that is this layer it encloses sporogenous tissue now this sporogenous tissue it functions as microspore mother cell the short form for this is m m c microspore mother cell now these microspore mother cells they undergo a cell division which is called as meiosis after this cell division the microspore mother cells they will form pollen grains now another name for pollen grains is the pollen grains are also called as microspores and the process by which microspore mother cell produces pollen grains this process is called as microsporogenesis if you split this word it becomes microspore and genesis microspore means pollen grain and genesis means formation so formation of pollen grains is called as microsporogenesis now one more thing i want to show you ki as we have seen in this diagram 
this middle line it represents connective what is the role of connective it helps to attach the two anchor loops if i hold it like this now this part of anther it becomes one lobe of anther which contains two pollen sacs and the remaining half it contains two pollen sacs so this is one anther lobe this is another anther lobe the total number of pollen sacs are four this condition it is called as tetra sporongiate tetra means four so when four pollen sacs are present in the anther the condition is called as tetra sporongiate and this connective it helps to connect this and this anther lobe so this is the entire structure of transverse section of anther which shows that inside the anther pollen grains are produced so where they are present they are present in the pollen sacs of anther and the process by which pollen grains are formed is called as microsporogenesis